Oh, oh, don't look into the light. Are you in there? No. All right, let's 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 actually dim this down while I'm doing this. Whew. There we go. What's going on, everybody? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So you just saw me fidgeting with the AG CX-10 Panasonic camcorder, which has been kind of easy to overlook because within the Panasonic Lumix world, there's a lot of stuff going on. You got their GH5 II, the GH6, their cube style line of BGH cameras, their full frame line of S cameras. So now you know what I mean when I said that this awesome line of Panasonic camcorders they're rolling out is kind of easy to overlook. There's also the bigger brother of this thing, the CX300, which maybe I'll do a video about soon, but I just wanted to take this video to drop a couple of things that I think you should know about the CX10. All right, let's just get this first part right out of the way. The CX10 is going to be special because it now has NDI compatibility. And you're like, what the heck is that? So if that term is unfamiliar, you better get familiar with it because the NDI streaming slash networking protocol is going to be something that a lot of other camera brands are going to start rolling out with their newer gen cameras. Panasonic just happens to be one of the brands that's being kind of proactive about this. NDI is going to be great because that's essentially gonna be able to turn practically any video camera into like a broadcast camera or a camera that's used within a network like that. Giving it compatibility and connectivity to every other camera slash device that's hooked up to that network. And that's really, really great because there's currently kind of no way to do that that's in like in everything under one roof sort of way. Anyways, back to this thing, that means internally, this thing has the licensing that allows for this NDI HX streaming mode, which it literally has to boot up into. And externally, the CX-10 is going to come with a few adapters that are going to make this connection possible. So first is this micro AB USB to full size USB female and then a male USB to RJ45 network port adapter. You then run a long network cable from this camera to wherever all the rest of the things in your network are going. And depending on what you're doing, now this camera will be super easily detectable and even controllable over a computer network. Beautiful. All right, moving on to the second thing you need to know about the AG CX-10 is this awesome lens. The CX-10 has a Leica designed Dicomar zoom lens fixed at the front, of course. There's no replacing this thing, but why would you need to? It's got a 4.1 to 98.9 millimeter focal length range, which is equivalent to a 25 to 600 millimeter on full frame. And in terms of magnification, that's a 24 times magnification from wide to tight. On top of that, you can extend the optical zoom range with the intelligent zoom feature, which will electronically zoom in on the image on top of that. This will extend that range to 32 times zoom in 4K and 48 times zoom in HD. It's an f1.8 lens, but remember that's on a one inch sensor. That's not really like a true f1.8. And also it's constructed with 14 elements in 11 groups, which is a little optically crowded considering the size of this lens. But honestly, in the grand scheme of camcorders, that's actually not that bad of an optical layout. Usually camcorders have tons and tons and tons of elements just like crammed in that tiny lens it can kind of make for like a cloudy image or really, really distracting lens flares where you can see the illumination of every element and there's like 26 of them. That is going to be maintained a lot better on this CX-10. You can shoot pretty much directly into a light source and it won't give you like that horribly distracting flare. And also I found that it is pretty dang sharp just with the exception of its focal length extremes, like all the way wide it's going to get a little bit softer and then all the way zoomed in you might know Notice it's not quite as sharp as like somewhere in the middle of that range. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is the top handle of this CX-10. So it is removable, of course. The cam even has this neat little trap door for the locking part of the handle, which is fun. And this top handle is going to give you two XLR inputs and a little mixing board for the audio inputs. Very normal, everyday camcorder stuff. But what it does have that's different 
is this little onboard soft light. Our friend Alec back here said, don't get too excited, Dom. That's just like a tally light or something, but boy was he wrong. I had to test this out for myself, and yep, that is a little onboard LED soft light. It's even got this little off on switch and a little intensity dial for it right here on the top. And this diffusion panel even snaps off, but I strongly recommend keeping that on because this light gets very sourcey looking very quickly. But of course, it's really nice to have in a pinch. And if you find the right sort of ratio, it could actually fill in your subject's face really nicely without having that too bad of like a sourcey look. Or you could just completely pump it on full brightness and go for like an urban exploration like type deal. Okay, next thing you need to know about the AGCX10 is the whole image sensor, processor, recording mode kind of scenario on this thing. The CX10 features a 15 megapixel, one inch type MOS 4K image sensor, which I can't really show you because it's behind this fixed lens. But equally important, this camcorder also features Panasonic's new Venus engine processor, which you're seeing on a lot of the newer gen Panasonic cameras. That's going to allow on these bodies for them to shoot like 4K 120 and really high bit speed recording modes. In terms of this thing, that Venus processor is going to allow this to get super, super nice looking 1080 video, but over a broadcast platform, which is actually kind of a demanding thing to do. Aside from streaming and broadcasting purposes though, the CX-10 is capable of a couple of decent 4K and 1080 recording modes recorded to its two SD card slots. It will record 4K up to 30 frames per second at a 10-bit 422 sampling rate, and 1080 up to 60 frames per second at this same rate. In a slightly more compressed HEVC long gop container, this will allow it to now record 4K up to 60 frames per second. Additionally, it will record 1080 in 120 frames per second, also in its super slow mode. And finally, the CX-10 will allow for 4K 60 in a 10-bit 422 sampling rate, but only externally over HDMI. All right, let's save the best for last here and talk about stabilization. The in-body image stabilization in the CX-10 is absolutely killer. We already know that Panasonic has IBIS technology completely dialed in from the GH5 and the GH6, and this is an even smaller sensor, so you kind of can assume that it's even easier to stabilize a one inch sensor over a micro four thirds. What's even nicer and kind of a necessity for handheld camcorder shooting, if you ask me, is this IBIS can be further enhanced by electronic image stabilization that the CX-10 allows for in a couple of different modes. So regular IBIS stabilization alone is really good, and then you add electronic IS on top of that, really, really stable, and yet, not a lot of telling signs of the image processing that goes on in electronic stabilization that you sometimes see. It looks really natural. And then there's the pan slash tilt mode that adds a little bit more leeway for the stabilization when panning and tilting motions are happening. This would be perfect for like field sports maybe. And then stable mode, which really locks it down. This is like tripod mode. You could be really rocking this camera around and it will keep the image super duper still. All right, everybody, that is pretty much gonna do it on this video, covering the five things I think you should know about the AG CX-10 4K camcorder from Panasonic. So, as always, if you have any questions about anything we talked about in this video, having to do with this camcorder, if you've used this before on a shoot, I wanna hear about that. But also, if you've used this thing's bigger brother, the CX-350, I definitely want to hear about that because I'm kind of teetering on doing a video about that thing because it's just even more hooked up, even beefier. I kind of want to see what that's all about. Anyways, if you happen to like this video, you know what to do. I tell you every single video. Hit it with that thumbs up button down below and that'll let me know you liked it. It'll bump this video up in the old algorithm. And also, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel, why don't you? And if you are subscribed, thank you very much, but also, you can hit that little bell button that's next to the subscribe button and that will keep you in the loop whenever we post new content. So with that, keep those bright ideas coming everybody and we'll see you in the next one.